This programme contains five short video clips aimed at pupils in years one and two. Each clip presents the first few minutes from a traditional story. These starters introduce character, setting and plot, leaving the children to work out how the story might end. Hello, my name is Red Riding Hood. Yeah, it's my granny's birthday today. I got presents for her in my basket and a cake. Come in. Come in. Aha. Hello, Miss Woodcutter. Hello, Red Riding Hood. Mind your acts. What? It's dangerous. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Where are you going? To my granny's house. It's her birthday. Oh, how lovely. Where's her house? On the other side of the woods with the green door. Oh, do not go in the woods. Why not? Why not go in the woods? Yeah. Why not? Because of the wolf. The wolf? The wolf. Is he big? He's very, very big. Is he bad? He's very, very bad. He's not a nice wolf? Not nice at all. Go on the road. Do not go in the woods. Give me a shout if you need me. Bye. 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 Well, I might go in the woods. I'll go and see if it's safe. La, 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 la. <gasps> the woods. I'm going in. Whee! There's no wolf. Mm, lovely flowers. I'll pick one for my granny. Which one? Um, ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bag full. One for the master, one for the dame, one for little boy <gasps> who lives down the lane. Hello. What is your name? Red Riding Hood. And you? My name is Mr. Wolf. But I'm a very nice wolf. You're not a bad wolf. No, no, I'm a very nice wolf. <laughs> Where are you going, my dear? See my granny. It's her birthday. Oh, really? How lovely. Happy birthday, grannykins. Where does she live, your granny? Hmm? Other side of the woods. Oh, what colour is her door? Hmm? Green. How lovely. Well, goodbye, my dear. Bye-bye. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. <gasps> Is he a good wolf or a bad wolf? Is he telling lies? Oh, oh dear, I better go and tell my granny. Granny, 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 granny. Pritpal Singh was a wealthy farmer. He employed more workers than anyone for miles around. They farmed his fields, cared for his livestock and looked after Pritpal and his wife Charanjit Kaur and their seven children. Pritpal Singh was a wealthy man, but he was not a generous man. He never stopped grumbling to his wife about paying his workers wages. Why do we have to employ all these people? he moaned. Because we need them, Charanjit replied. Without them, who would sow the seed, milk the cows and fix the roof of the barn? Why couldn't we get just one person to do all the work? His wife laughed. You'd have to employ a demon to do so much work all alone. Pritpal Singh clapped his hands. My clever wife, that's it. We'll employ a demon. The miserly farmer went to find Jaduji, the magician. If Jaduji would use his magic to conjure up a demon, Pritpal Singh would give him a patch of land to farm. The magician agreed. He filled a karai with plants and potions. As he stirred it, chanting a spell, the pot began to bubble and boil, and a demon appeared. Master, he growled, your wish is my command, but only if you agree to my terms. I must work day and night. When you have no more work for me to do, I will eat you for my supper. Pritpal Singh knew the work on his farm would be never-ending, so he agreed, and the demon swept him up and carried him home. Dismiss all the workers, Pritpal Singh called to his wife the instant they arrived, and he set his new employee to work. Within an hour, the demon had groomed the horses, fed the chickens, picked the cotton, and pulled up the potatoes, and Pritpal Singh was getting nervous. He told his wife about the demon's terms. It will be a bad day, husband, she said. 
When this demon runs out of work, we must make sure that never happens. But how? said a very anxious Pritpal Singh. Leave that to me, said his wife, smiling. Noble King Hans and fair Queen Ingeborg wanted to find a husband for their daughter, Princess Brunhilde. But they couldn't agree which prince she should marry. Prince Sir Joachim? Uh, prince uh, Franz, hmm? Uh, <laughs> prince Ip? No, no, Prince uh, Alfonso. Ooh, he likes playing chess, but do any of them like fishing? No. no. Well, I do. And I'm going to see how many fish I can catch today. <laughs> Not a single catch. <laughs> oh dear. I'll never find my way home in the dark. Oh, on the old tower by the sea. Maybe I could sleep here tonight. Princess Brunhilde locked the heavy wooden door behind her, took the key and climbed to the very top. A monster came out of the sea and swallowed the key. Oh, oh it's morning. I want to go home. Where's my key? Oh, I know. I'll send a message in this old bottle. I am Princess Brunhilde. I am locked inside an old tower. I am hungry. I am thirsty. Help! And so the bottle travelled across the sea. Fisherman Knut found the bottle on his island and pulled out the cork. Help! I am Princess Brunhilde. I am locked inside an old tower by the sea. I am hungry. I am thirsty. To the rescue! Papa! Up we go! Hello, I'm Fisherman Knut, and I'm here to save you. Thank you! Oh! Oh! Oops. Turned and snatched Fisherman Knut away. Knut! Oh no! How am I ever going to get out of this tower now? <laughs> there was once a handsome Raja who lived in a magnificent palace surrounded by beautiful gardens. He dressed in the finest clothes and on his head he always wore a large and elaborate topi hat. He was never seen without it because the topi hid a secret. The Raja had enormous ears. Just one of the Raja's subjects knew this secret, his barber Gopal. As he styled his master's hair, he often thought, the Raja has the largest pair of ears I have ever seen. Gopal and the Raja never spoke about his ears, but from time to time, the Raja would say, Gopal, my loyal and trusted barber, I know you will never betray my secret, for you have sworn to tell no one. My lips are sealed, your majesty. But in truth, Gopal was bursting to tell somebody. He was itching to say aloud, The Raja's got big ears! One evening, after a long day snipping and clipping, Gopal was walking alone in the forest with only the trees for company. As he strolled along, a thought came to him. He could tell the Raja's secret to a tree. He saw a tall tree with branches that reached like fingers into the sky. It was the perfect tree to tell. Gopal took a deep breath and shouted into the branches, 
the Rajas got big ears. Then smiling, he set off home. He had not betrayed the Rajas' trust, but at last he had said the words. Some weeks later, the Raja announced he wished to hold a party. He dispatched a woodsman to the forest to cut down a tree and sent the wood to be made into new instruments for the court musicians. When the day of the party came, the palace was filled with every sort of entertainment. The highlight was to be a concert played on the new instruments carved from Gopal's tree. As the Raja tapped his feet to the beat of the Santor, he began to frown. The rhythm seemed to say, the Raja's got big ears. In return, the sitar asked, who said so? And the drum answered, Gopal said so. The Raja was outraged. His secret was revealed. Send for that traitor barber immediately, he commanded. There was once, long ago, a magician in Morocco. I am the greatest magician in the world. Everything will be mine. If I cover my eyes like this, I can see as far as China, and the princess of China, she will be mine. And the magic palace will be mine. And the cave, full of treasure, it will be mine. And in the cave, a magic genie ring, it will be mine. And a magic genie lamp with the greatest genie in the world, it will be mine. And a boy named Al Adin to open the cave, he will be mine. There, down there, is the cave with the rope to pull. Now, where is the boy Al Adin? Al Adin, I'm a bit busy. Come here if you want some treasure. Treasure? Yeah. Where? Down there. In the cave. Pull the rope. Mm. It won't open, so it won't open. You must say the password, your mother's name. Mum's name? That's easy. Twan K. Done it, done it, done it. Can I get the treasure now, sir? No. First get a lamp, an oil lamp. Why? Don't ask questions. All right, then. <laughs> have you found it? I'm looking. Have you found it? I'm looking. Oh, have you found it now? Hey, look what I've found, sir. I've found some treasure. I want the lamp. Sorry, sir. Have you found it? I'm looking. Hey. I found it. He's found it. Give it to me, boy. Give it to me, but the door shut. Open the door. It won't open. Or say the password, your mother's name. Twanke, twanke. No, it doesn't work for me inside, only for me outside. Hmm. Of course, the genie of the lamp would get him out. But then he would have that genie of the lamp, and I wouldn't. I know. I'll tell him about the genie of the ring. That's not such a good genie, you can have that one. Aladdin, there's a ring in there. Find it, rub it, and a genie will get you out. Can you find it? I can't find it. Oh, well, I will go back to Morocco. If he doesn't get out, well, too bad. But if he does, I will come back and take the lamp. Then I will have the greatest genie in the world, and I will have the princess of China, and the palace, and the treasure. But I will never tell him about the genie of the lamp. <laughs>